Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my channel. Um, in today's video we are going to be painting a tropical beach scape. Um, so this is going to be the first time I'm going to be painting a beach on my channel. So I decided to do something that is very beginner friendly, so if you are a beginner this is perfect for you. We're not going to be focusing too much on how to create waves and ripples. It is more just about focusing on the depth that we use when painting an ocean with watercolour and how we like to make the composition on the paper. So to begin with, I have a reference picture here that I got from Pixabay, which is great for stock-free images. And also today I'm filming at an angle because I do realise sometimes in my video when I'm putting my hand above, you cannot exactly see what I'm painting. When I put it straight above so I decided to try an angle so that it wouldn't be blocking my my hand wouldn't be blocking what I'm doing so to begin with we're just going to be painting uh, we're gonna be drawing so I've just got a pencil here this is not a watercolor pencil just a standard drawing pencil and I'm gonna be painting in our beach and our um, the line as where the water is going to start and the sky is going to finish okay so that's just roughly like that is about almost halfway but a little bit less and then I'm going to be drawing in some just the shapes of some mountains that we're going to be doing this sort of a little one here and then the kind of big ones that come all the way down there okay so we've got three little mountains and then just to have a rough idea where the water is going to start and end so in this way it comes sort of slanted at an angle like that so we've kind of got a line drawing downwards and then just to have an idea we're going to be doing a palm tree so I'm just going to draw two lines that get slightly thinner at the top okay and then just going to draw some palm tree lines just so we have an idea where we're going to be painting them because as a beginner it's always really helpful to just not have to concentrate so much about where things are going and instead I'm actually going to change so on the picture the palm tree is coming from down up but I'm actually going to change that into sort of bending sideways because I feel like that is more fitting with this with the way we're doing the paper which is in um, portrait so now we've got that done we can get started into painting so for colors I'm just going to explain the colors I have mixed here I have yellow ochre on its own for the sand some burnt umber for the tree bark I've mixed cerulean blue and intense blue for the ocean I have some intense blue on its own for the sky and then I have some this is burnt umber and hookers green for the mountains and then I've got a neutral tint which I made by using Payne's grey burnt umber and intense blue and then I've got some hookers green here mixed with a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow this one is mixed and then this one has a little bit of burnt umber inside so I will be talking you through again the colours as we're going through, but just in case you want to pause and get your colours ready before we begin. I also have some damp baby wipes here, just in case I need to do any correcting. And let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we're going to begin by just wetting our paper. So I've got a nice mop brush here. You can see it's already got some tint. So I'm going to use my clean cup and I'm just going to be just dropping some big blobs of water. This is just so that we don't have to be going back and forth with our brush. Okay, and then I'm just going to spread that water all over the page. We're doing the whole page now. And just going over everything. I am using 100% um, cotton. This is by Bao Hong, which is much more affordable than Archer's paper but it is 100% cotton and I like to get the extra rough cold pressed paper. I think it gives the painting a lot more texture, which I personally like. So my camera cut off and skipped the entire cloud part, 
but what I did, I'm going to go over it again with you, is I took some intense blue just like this and I did some swiping and I did some dabbing with the blue, with intense blue, just to create these sort of cloudy shapes and I just, I got lighter, I cleaned my, I rinsed my brush um, with water and then I dragged the colour down towards the end just so that there is a depth of colour so it's darker at the top and lighter towards the bottom. And now with a baby wipe, I'm just going to be going over certain places and creating much lighter places. So where it is white, you can just go over again and just create more sort of clouds. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So that is the uh, sky done. And now just to make sure that our the bottom half of the page is still wet, I am just going to be going over with just a little bit more water. You want to make sure it is nice and um, nice and wet. You don't want it to be too too dry, otherwise it won't blend very well. So I'm going in with my yellow ochre now, and I'm just going to be dragging this, starting from the bottom, and I'm just going to be taking it across. And I'm just going to be adding a little bit more yellow ochre towards the bottom because usually when you take pictures it's always darker towards the bottom and I'm just going to take it past the waterline so that they do blend together just taking just a little bit more yellow ochre I'm just going to be and you can just add little pieces of a bit more darker yellow ochre where you think it's just out of it to make it a bit more interesting and give it a little bit of texture so it's not a flat wash just like that so that is your sand done and now we're going to be doing the ocean water so taking cleaning my brush just giving a little wipe so it's not too wet and then picking up the cerulean blue and hooker's green mix I'm now just going to be going in with my watercolour, my my colour, sorry, with, with our ocean. Okay, and we're just going to be bringing it all the way down, like so. So we're just going to be putting it like that. And then we do want it to be a little bit more darker towards the horizon line than it is at the bottom so I'm just making a little bit of a stronger mix now and I'm going to be putting that towards the end and then I'm going to clean my brush off now I'm going to take a little bit more of cerulean blue and I'm just going to add a little bit in the middle and now I'm going to clean my brush dry it off not dry it off just Clean it and now we're going to be blending in the colours like so. I'm just going to be taking a little bit more of the mix. Okay, and then it does look quite flat to me, so I'm going to be taking a little bit of intense blue and just mixing that towards the end. So we get a bit of depth it's just so that you have the illusion that the ocean is further away at the back so the water is more condensed now as you can see there's a little bit of leakage where our mountains and horizon line meet so just going with a damp baby wipe i'm just going to be drying it so that the water doesn't try to spread anymore than where we've put it so that's going to give you a nice clean line for later on okay so there is the water and the sand done and so now we're going to take just a little bit of neutral tint and we're going to be placing that under where the water is so you want to do this very carefully so we just created that shadow where the water sort of meets here uh, we don't want it to be too dark we just want it to be quite light and then again going in with a neutral tint 
and creating a shadow of the palm tree that is going to be coming over. I can still see that there is a bit more spreading of the water. So just again, going with our wipe and correcting that line so that is a nice clean crisp line if your wipe or damp towel is dirty then you would just get a clean one at this point because we obviously don't want to be putting any color towards the bottom okay so now we're going to have to wait for this to dry so we can then go on to do the mountains and the palm tree and then any other little shadows we want to create in the water so just make sure you put your brush down and just wait and be patient for your paper to dry so that we get the results that we really want. Okay, so now my painting is dry. So we are going to now paint in the mountains. I'm going to be taking in, I'm gonna be swapping out my brushes from my pool ribbon size four, and I'm gonna be using my Princeton, this is uh, the Neptune, which is a watercolor brush. And I'm gonna be using this size six round. So I'm gonna wet my brush and I'm going to be mixing in, I'm going to be dipping my brush in the mix of hooker's green and burnt umber. And with that, I'm going to start, we don't want the brush to be too loaded. But we're just going to start in the mountain like this. We're just going to use a light amount of pressure, not too much. And we're just going to leave some space towards the bottom because we're going to be going in with yellow ochre in a minute so just kind of stay towards the bottom and we're going to be leaving this big space for the yellow ochre to go inside of so cleaning your brush now and going in with yellow ochre we're going to be just dipping it in And kind of use jagged shapes kind of pushing the brush up and then down quickly to create this sort of um, tree effect as if there were trees on that mountain far away and then just sort of going in any gaps that you have and filling them in with the with yellow ochre and then taking oh actually not yellow ochre sorry now taking, going back in with the green, we're just going to create little pools like so. And we're going to come back and really create some shapes here. So that we get the effect of some trees. And then I'm going to be taking, just rubbing my brush in some burnt umber. And this is just to create some shadow and also darken the green a little bit as well. So that we have a little bit more shade. And also where the trees are, you can make some of them a bit darker by adding some burnt umber into them. And there you have it. So that's our first mountain. Just going to Actually drag it down slightly like so give it a bit more of that green and just make that horizon line a bit more visible and now going in again with some hooker's green and burnt umber and we're now going to repeat the same on the larger mountain so just starting off with some green mix that we've prepared, leaving some gaps, taking the mountain down the line like so, using a sort of a pushing technique so that nothing is too straight or perfect. And now cleaning your brush, you're going back in with that yellow ochre and bringing the colors together by letting them blend to make them blend you have to make sure that the colors 
are still wet otherwise they will just sit on top of each other instead of blend together blending together so you can see when we add two colors and we let them blend it just it creates sort of a new color and it makes things look a bit more natural and a bit more realistic rather than the mountains just being a flat one shape okay so going now back in with our green mix a little bit of burnt umber now just create some shadows make sure that you're putting a little bit towards the bottom because that is usually where there is always a bit more shadows it's at the bottom of things and then just taking the brush and using the tip to create some trees and just some jagged lines like so and there is our second mountain i'm just going to go in with a clean brush and smooth out the bottom so that it's all one line i'm actually going to do the same here because the horizon line is usually always very neat okay and then we just got the last one which is the little one just sort of here we're just going to and then what we'll do is we will maybe connect the two together i'm using a very light hand for this as you can't you can always add but you cannot take off with watercolour so and then just going in with my yellow ochre when I'm doing a small amount in my brush is not as wet so I do just dry a little bit on my wet wipe so that it isn't as um, wet so it's not creating any pools of colour for me and then taking a little bit of burnt umber and adding some shadows like so and there you have it so that's our mountains done now and now we're going to be going in for the tree so we're just going to have to wait for the mountains to dry because the palm tree leaves are going to be going over so we're just going to wait for these mountains to dry and then we'll come back and do the leaves okay now swapping to a size five i'm taking my hooker's green and I'm going to be, you're going to be able to see the lines roughly where we painted them in the beginning. And just to begin with, I'm going to be putting my brush down and then just sort of flicking it out. And we're just going to be doing this and we're going to be repeating this over and over again. So, and then make sure that you're going the other way. Okay, so just make sure that you have enough on your brush to take you um, just a reminder that I will have all of the products that I used on the description below so that you will be able to check out those products if you want and then we've got some going on the side here in the picture so we're just going to be sort of following the natural shape of the leaves okay you can just sort of and towards the middle the leaves are usually denser so they'll usually meet up towards the middle okay and then we've got another one sort of coming upwards this way so we're gonna again just take Take the brush up towards like that and we've got another one so we're going to be like this way even if you can't tell what all of the lines are doing oops so I dropped my brush so I'm just gonna quickly use my wet wipe and dab up any color and then it should be fine and we're just going to continue on with these strokes and then we've got one falling really sort of downwards here 
and so the lines are shorter on one side and then they are much longer on the other side so this is going to give the appearance of it being turned sideways and we also have one that has fallen to the floor in the image okay so going to be needing to put some like so and then another one going sideways like so and then this one is going to be again longer on one side and then shorter on the other side so that we can't so it gives the illusion of the palm tree being smaller and now going back in with the same brush some of your palm trees will be dry some of them won't we're going with the hooker's green and burnt umbers mix and what we're doing is we're just spiraling out the color and this is just to create depth with our with our palm tree so here we have we're just going over the lines again I am sorry um, my words are muddling up I'm concentrating so so much okay taking again burnt umber and hookers green and just make sure we are making the core of the palm tree darker as we go along so that we create this beautiful depth in our palm tree and there and there you have it beautiful simple palm tree just using two colors and now we're going to clean our brush. Now I'm going to swap back to my size four and I'm going to go in with some of the burnt umber that we have from earlier. And I'm just going to drag it upwards. It's going to bleed slightly, which is perfect. Just what we want. Just remember that palm trees are not perfect trees and nature is never perfect so don't worry about having any funny shape or anything like that and then with that I'm just going to drop in a little bit of yellow ochre just to and then go in with some more burnt umber so that we have a bit of shadow on the side and then we're just going to create some lines whilst it is still wet so that we're creating some just some shadows like that just going to do some light strokes all over the branches and there you have it so we can wait for that we'll wait for this to finish um, before we do we're going to just add some little bit of details to the tree bark but that is pretty much it now we're going to go in with this pen which is by Uniball it's just a white jelly roll pen I'm just going to clean the tip off and we're just going to add in a tiny touch of a wave we're just going to add a little bit of a wave maybe on this side so what we're going to do is we're just going to lightly hold the pen it's not really there we go we're just going to make just very lightly and because this is a rough paper 
it's going to give a little bit of texture and then we're going to get another one and I'm just using sort of like a a jagged like so. I'm just going to create a bit more thickness. I'm just making my, my pen go in an up and downwards um, shape and I'm just going to take that along there and then we're just going to add a few, maybe a few little lines on the beach here. just sort of doing these sort of circle shapes wavy shapes and then coming back down to the main shape like so and that is pretty much it maybe just a few little white pieces on the sand or maybe some glimmering water and there we have it a very easy very simple um, tropical beach painting that is perfect for beginners who are starting to paint water and this is really easy to do at any time. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and if you did please consider subscribing and tune in for my next tutorial next week. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.